Hello, I am going to go over digital camera basics with you in hopes that you will learn how to use the camera very, very well. So the first thing I want to go over is what DSLR stands for, Digital uh, Single Lens Reflex. So if you just say SLR, it means that it's a film camera. So digital means if the camera is digital, it says DSLR. So it's a digital camera that uses mirrors to direct light from the lens to the viewfinder, which is a hole in the back of the camera that you look through to see what you're taking a photograph of. It all started with the camera obscura back in the Renaissance is when they really created the camera obscura where there was a hole in the wall or um, a curtain and the image outside would re be reflected upside down and backwards on the wall. So uh, artists would use that to recreate things very realistically. The next thing I want to go over is a diagram of a camera. I just want to let you know the light from a camera, the light from outside goes through this lens like that and then hits the mirror. It goes up to the pentaprism. It kind of hits the other side of the pentaprism and then goes out to your eye. So this is the viewfinder right here. Um, the image sensor is number four. It's kind of centering, figuring out how much light to put in. Um, also the shutter is kind of like a closet door opening and closing to let in light. The next thing I want to go over is exposure, which is something you'll hear over and over. Exposure is the amount of light collected by the sensor in your camera during a single picture. If the shot is exposed too long, the photo will be too bright, and if it's too short, the photograph will appear too dark. Almost all cameras today have light meters, which measure the light in a given shot and set an ideal exposure, and the three primary controls here camera uses for exposure are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. And that is what is called the exposure triangle. And that is what's used for a good exposure. Aperture in a camera. Simply put, aperture is a hole within a lens through which light travels into the camera body. It's easier to understand the concept if you just think about our eyes. Every camera that we know of today is designed like human eyes. The size of the aperture, large versus small aperture. In photography, aperture is expressed in F numbers, for example, F slash 5.6. These F numbers are known as F stops, are a way of describing the size of the aperture or how open or closed the aperture is. The smaller F stop means a larger aperture, where a larger F stop means a smaller aperture. For example, f1.4 is larger than f2 and much larger than 8.0. So we're talking about the size of the hole, not necessarily um, anything else. It's kind of doesn't quite coincide with what you would think the numbers are. Uh, small apertures, meaning high f numbers like f22, increase the depth of field, bringing both the main subject and background into focus. You can also think of it as if you are squinting your eyes. So when you squint your eyes, you can see much better because you're let, allowing less light in and there's less surface that the light is hitting on your eyes so you're able to see a little bit better. Large apertures, which is low F numbers like F2.8, F2 soften background details. Depth of field, also known in D DOF, is the distance to which objects behind and in front of the focal point appear to be in focus. So here is a photograph that uh, most people seem to know the toy, I guess, Wally. And so on the left hand side is f2.8, so it's a shallow depth of field. It is a large aperture. You start seeing where the foreground is really in focus. The middle ground and background are pretty fuzzy and kind of shallow depth of field, very shallow depth of field. There's also some circles there which are bokeh, known as bokeh, which means circles of light. And it happens with very, very shallow depth of field and light. The next one is an f8, which is kind of like a happy medium. 
whereas the foreground and the middle ground are in focus, but the background are out of focus. Also here, here's a baby, so super shallow depth of field, f1.4, where you see the edges are getting blurred, but the eyes and the nose and the lips are super, super um, in focus, and it gives a really nice light and sweet look to things. A lot of food photography is done that way too. Um, this next one, I'm assuming it's probably Ireland or some sort of very green area, uh, is a larger depth of field, which means the foreground, middle ground, and background are all in focus. From here, we go to shutter speed. So shutter speed is also known as exposure time, which stands for the length of time a camera shutter is open to expose light onto the camera sensor. If the shutter speed is fast, it can help to freeze action completely. And if it's slow, it creates a motion blur, where moving objects appear blur along the direction of your motion. Uh, they're typically measured in fractions of a second when they're under a second. So for example, a quarter means a quarter of a second, Well, one over 250 means 250th of a second or four milliseconds. If you see a one and an apostrophe, that means, or one in a quote, that means one second or slower. Generally, you don't use that number unless you're shooting at nighttime or in a very dark area. So the top one is two thousandths of a second. That's super duper fast. You see the bird in flight and you also see um, all the little water specks. And the next one is twentieth of a second. And for this one, you see the kids in focus, which is actually shocking because usually kids are running all over the place. You also see the fence as being still because it's not moving and chances are it was on a tripod otherwise this would be all be out of focus and then the merry-go-round since there's motion has that motion blur so the rule of thumb for shutter speed is that the slowest shutter speed for handheld photography is a 60th of a second anything lower than that should either be on a tripod or on a straight solid surface i make sure think of things like fences but in very Flat fence is really good. Um, some people use rocks. I have a friend who d doesn't believe in tripods and so he kind of uses whatever he can to at his disposal. Just bear in mind that if you're doing a makeshift tripod, you might have to make it really horizontal later on in life. Uh, any slower handheld shutter speeds begin to get motion blur and your photos might be out of focus. Unfortunately, there is nothing you can do for photographs that are out of focus. You just have to take a different photo or use a different photo. Unless you're intentionally out of focus, uh, they're garbage. There's nothing you can do in post-process in Photoshop or anything. All right, and the third element of the exposure triangle, so so far we've covered aperture, shutter speed, and this is the third one, it's ISO. So ISO is the level of sensitivity of your camera to available light. The lower the ISO, the less sensitive to the light, while a higher ISO increases the sensitivity of your camera. The component within your camera that can change sensitivity is called image sensor, or simply sensor. With increased sensitivity, your camera sensor can capture images in low light environment without having to use a flash, but higher sensitivity comes at its expense. It adds grain or noise to the pictures. So here is it, an example of what it looks like, low ISO versus high ISO. Um, the low ISO, 200, this would be in daylight. And so you can see where the skin is really clear, really beautiful, bright details, smooth skin. And on the right is the very high ISO. Um, maybe they did it to get more detail or something. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it was at night. Maybe the one on the left was with the tripod and then the one on the right at night and then the one on the right could be also at night uh, but didn't have a tripod. <clears throat> and so you start seeing all this busyness, all this noise and pixelation on her skin. The general rule of thumb is that bright and sunny is 100 ISO. Cloudy is 250 ISO, indoors is 500 ISO, and nighttime without a flash is 1600 ISO. 
uh, finally, modes on the DSLR, just so you get an idea. Um, M means manual control over camp aperture and shutter. That's when you're a little bit more advanced and you're comfortable deciding what you want, what's the most important. Uh, aperture priority is when aperture, the depth of field, is the most important for the photograph. Shutter priority is when shutter is the most important in the photograph in which case taking pictures at night or in sporting events and then the camera will say you can say the camera okay i want 750th of a second to freeze the motion and then it'll adjust the aperture and the aperture to wherever it needs to be for the right exposure and then p is program where the camera sets the shutter speed and aperture you're letting the camera take that over okay so that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to seeing you make some amazing artwork.